Shalom. Call the Lord Yahweh Bashan Abishai, Bashan Bukak Badash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders. Salutations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. To the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth, that be like unto the speckled bird, the Israelite foreigners. And to the Akwath that are listening and learning to you, I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm off from the branch of the Great Millstone, coming into another lesson in critical history. I'm going to be reading from the book, How the Word is Passed. All right, the answer to that is to the prophets. But this is a book written by this man right here, this, this Jake, named uh, Clint Smith. All right, so I'm going to be reading, uh, and, and, and it's a... Uh, let me see. It's called The Reckoning with the History of Slavery Across America. Um, but I doubt if he really, you know, I just read a couple pages so far. It's a pretty interesting read. So, you know, Yahweh Rat I will get quite a few lessons out of this um, as I go through this book. But um, the end the end result of this is that those who, matter of fact, let me grab a couple quick scriptures, quick scriptures that I hadn't. Um, thought about is that because the end result is that those who took took people into slavery are going to go into slavery all right um so the first scripture that comes to mind is isaiah 14th chapter because this is a future prophecy okay this is the reckoning all right so I'm starting Isaiah 14 and, and 1, and it says, For Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land. And strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave unto the house of Jacob. All right? So let me just go up. There's just more images of, uh, see, the joke is on them with that image right there. I'll explain that in the middle, the one in the middle with, uh, De Niro and uh, and what's her name? Minnie Ripperton's daughter, uh, Rudolph something Rudolph, Maya Rudolph, I believe. But it says, verse two. And the children shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives, whose captives they were. And rule over their oppressors. So what you're looking at is images, artist depictions of Sally Hemmings, because according and and Thomas Jefferson and a couple different uh, Hollywood variations of it. All right. Like this one here. I forget this actor's name from. Uh, from the Jurassic Park movies, but. According to the descriptions of her that's been written throughout history, this is a roundabout way what she looked like. You know, she was supposedly very attractive, uh, you know, a so-called mulatto. Not a, and I'm going to assume that she was really an Edomite anyway. So her children were, were just completely and totally Edomites because it turns out, as we begin to read in this book, that Sally Hemmings and, and, um, and, and his wife Martha with sisters. And see, Esau says half. There's no such thing as half. You are whatever your father is, according to scripture. All right. Matter of fact, let's grab that real quick. Um, that would be the book of Numbers. That's the, the easiest and simplest go to. There are others that I like even more, but this one is simple. Um, this is Numbers 1 and, and uh, 18. Oh. Wait a minute, Salaki, I did that wrong. No, one eighteen one. This is Numbers 1 and 18, and it says, And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month, and they declared their pedigrees after their family, so your lineage, all right, who you are by race. By the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names for 20 years and upward by their poles. So it is the father's sperm. 
That's why it's referred to as the family jewels. The man determines the nationality. The woman just brings forth the seed that he puts in her. And whatever seed, and the, the, regardless of what she looks like, the child is what the father is. So if the father was a so-called white man, you could be dark as, uh, you know, as Wesley Snipes. All right. But if your father was a so-called white man, then so are you. You're just a chocolate covered Edomite. And that's why I'm talking about this picture in the middle with De Niro. If you are spiritual at all, you would know that De Niro is not a so-called white man. He's of Sicilian descent, all right? And, and if you know the history of the Sicilians, well, just like they Dennis Harper told you in that movie with, uh, with, with uh, what was it called? True Romance, I believe. He told you about the history of the Sicilians, that they were spawned from Negroes, and they were. Well, he called them eggplants and niggers. <laughs> that was Christopher Walken in that scene. Christopher didn't like that too much, but it's true. And most Sicilians, you know, even though they don't like to admit it or talk about it, they know it's true. They know who they are. But as we get closer to the demise of the so-called white man, a lot of them Sicilians are going to start clinging on to their Negro brothers. <laughs> when, when, the, when, you know, when the hand turns. <laughs> All right. And Maya Rudolph, this brown skinned chick right here, light brown. Uh, you know, that's uh, uh, the famous uh, 70s uh, crooner, female songstress. All right. Minnie Rippleton's daughter. Her father's an Edomite. So this is completely total reverse roles here. It's tears. If you're following the uh if you're following the 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 arrows there. All right. So, but now that we've got all that out the way, let me get into this book a little bit. I'm just gonna read a couple things, a couple pages. And uh this is the uh matter of fact, I can read this portion. Through, I guess this was written by Frederick Douglass. No, not that. That wasn't the one I wanted to read. I'm going to have to read that one too. I didn't even see that one. This is re read by uh, Toni Morrison, The Sight of Memory. All right. And let's see if we can focus that. Read it through the camera. There it is. It says, You know, they straightened the Mississippi River in places to make room for houses, livable acreage. Occasionally the river floods these places. Flood is a word that they use, but in fact, it's not flooding, it's remembering. Remember what used to be, all right? And, and I say that because the truth is flooding the earth now. See if we can bring that back into focus, yeah. The truth is flooding the earth. Why? Because the Israelites have waken up according to prophecy, to who they were. Because anyone claiming that they've been an Israelite all along, that they've been Jewish all along, then that person, group, people, do not fit prophecy. Because the scriptures clearly say that the Israelites will be scattered to the four corners of the earth via slavery, via slave ships, as it does in the curses, Deuteronomy 28, 68. And, uh, and then it also talks about the Great Awakening, that they will remember themselves that they will be discontinued from their heritage, Jeremiah 17, 4. So this is uh, Hosea uh, 1 and 10. And it reads, Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered, and it shall come to pass in a place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people. There it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God, all right, of the living power. So, you know, just like it says that, you know, that we will be the hidden ones, hidden for our, our heritage will be hidden, all right? And uh, now let's read a little bit of this book. I'm going to go to the page 29 because that's where it starts. It starts about uh, Jefferson here. And I'm just going to read a little bit and then jump over to page 31. And just bring out a couple scriptures. All right. So this is a uh, page 29 and how the word is passed by Clint Smith. And it says Jefferson's conception of love seemed to have been so distorted by his own prejudices that he was unable to recognize the endless examples of love that pervaded 
plantation acro plantations across the country. Mothers who huddled over their children and took the lash so their little ones wouldn't have to. Surrogate mothers and fathers and grandparents who took in children and raised them as their own when their biological parents were disappeared in the middle of the night. And the people who loved and married and committed to one another despite the omnipresent threat that they might be separated at any moment. What is love is not this. And, and, and the fact that anyone would have to live in that condition. But you know what? That was punishment from on high. Let's, let's grab the curse. Because so-called white people or any other race didn't go through that. The Israelites went through that. Okay? And, and mainly at the hands of Edomites, who, who were self-proclaimed white people this day. This is Deuteronomy 28 and 30. And it reads... No, 32, thy sons and thy daughters shall be given to another people and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long and there shall be no might in thy hand. And in some cases, the parents were sold away from their children, especially if they maybe thought you were problematic or, you know, or some Edomite wanted some Negro woman so bad to be his concubine that he paid a premium price to another slave owner to take her, to take her away, despite the fact that she was already married with children. All right. And they did this sort of thing. Um, our women and our men, because they were not only having sexual relationship with, with slave women, they were having sexual relationships with slave men, women, boys, and girls. Factual history. And they don't like that. Okay, they don't like the they don't like the fact that this this history is coming out, coming abroad, All right? Because it gives you a true picture of who these people really are. There's nothing white about them. There's nothing pure about them at all. All right. Um, guess I'll start here. There is no story in Monticello. There is no story of Thomas Jefferson without understanding Sally Hemings. We have letters or documentations written by Sally, birth name, likely Sarah. And there's a, there's a manifest in this book that shows you a lot of uh, the slaves had Hebrew-like names and Hebrew names. We'll get to that in another lesson. Hemings, uh, it says, uh, birth name, likely Sarah, Sarah Hemings, and, and nothing written by Jefferson about her. There are no photographs of her. Almost all that we know of her physical appearance comes from Isaac Jefferson, who was enslaved in Monticello at the time of, as Hemings and described her as mighty, near white, Sally, very handsome, long, straight hair down her back. Other than that, all portraits that depict her likeness are rendered from imagination of the artist. She is a shadow without a body. And that's, that's, that's pretty sad that she, her name is so prevalent in history, yet we don't even have a real image of her. But most artist depictions, as you're looking at her now, is these different images. And, and it's funny, too, that, that this actress right here, I guess she's playing her, uh, that the arrow's on right now. I can't think of her name right now. Tandy Newton or something like that. Tandy Newton or Tandy Newton. She's actually a tear too. She's a brown. She's a chocolate covered Edomite. All right. She's really a so-called white woman. Okay. She and ha Sally have something in, in, uh, in, in common. And that's the scripture about the wheat and the tears. And this is the main time that that happened. This is also something that, you know, those, those, uh, uh, the black only Israelites don't like to talk about because you, like I said, a white, a so-called white man could have all these children with a, with a black woman and some come out light, some come out and then some come out looking like completely like a Negro. Then that Negro marries other Negroes and, you know, and, and next thing you know, you got a whole generation, a whole, uh, a bloodline of tears. 
They don't like to talk about that because these slave men produced many of, of, of sons that went on to marry so-called Negro women. And there are millions of so-called black people who are really white. All right. And vice versa. All right. There's a lot of so-called uh, white people. When you trace them back far enough, like De Niro, you find out that the seed that they come from, not their outward covering, not their skin, but the bloodline they come from, the seed line is just that of a so-called Negro. All right. That's how you get uh, people like uh, Justin Timberlake, for example. That's why he's so talented and can sing and dance and do the things that he does. All right. People like Elvis. All right. Um, and black only <laughs> Israelites, you know, or native only Israelites. They don't understand that. You know, they, they have no idea. They're not spiritual. They don't or they just don't believe in the word of the Lord. But it says uh, a constellation for whom there are no stars, and yet the story of Stalin Hem Hemming sit at the center of Monte Monticello. For two centuries, Jefferson scholars, as well as as, as well as Jefferson acknowledgement descendants, rejected the idea, despite the evidence to contrary, that Jefferson had either a romantic or sexual relationship with, Sa with Sally. So all this evidence, that goes to show that's, that's the nature of the so-called white man, white woman, deny, deny, deny. I don't care what the camera says. I don't care what the film says. I don't care what the DNA says. I don't care what the witness say. It's what we say. That's pretty much their take on history. And as a matter of fact, that's exactly what they did with history. They deny real history and they give you what they want. All right. And when you bring the truth, well, they're going to call it theory. Critical race theory. No, we're talking about critical race facts here. We're reading the facts. Sally Hemmings' mother, Elizabeth, was a mixed race enslaved woman owned by Jefferson's father-in-law, John Wells. Elizabeth, often called Betty, likely gave birth to six of Wells' children while in bondage. So, so Sally came from a relationship and she ended up playing the same role. And then these Edomites had a, 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 an affinity for light skin or lighter brown skin or, or mulatto, what they referred to, uh, women, women who had the mixed features of a Negro and, and a so-called white person, all right? Whether it be the father was, 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 the, was black or the father was white, they had, they had this affection that, you know, the, these light skin people were, uh, 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 were, were just something of desire. All right. And I found that in my younger years, especially now that I've gotten older, I've gotten a little dark, a little more color to me. But I was very, very fair skinned as a young man and as a child. And um, I had a lot of different escapades and interminglings with with white women. And they would always be comfortable to tell me that they've always wanted to be with, uh, you know, Negro men or that whole sort of thing. You know, and that they would. Uh, and that it was and that the fact that I was fair complected made it it was easy all right but now <laughs> you know they straight go for the wesley types wesley snipes type now you know and which goes to show you that the so-called white man is losing his power all right because of the condition of a, of a woman of your women of your nation is 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 evidence of the condition of your your race your people all right and our women are just completely out of order and gone and guess what? And now the so-called white woman it has joined because you know a lot of brothers get on get on get on, get on our women, and our women should be gotten on. They're 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 the 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 chosen vessels, the people of the Lord. All right, but you know these other women are completely out of order, especially the so-called white woman. All right, our women, are, you know, collectively, unfortunately, our women are, are lower than low, but they can never outlow the so-called white woman collectively. She is a mother of whoredoms and still the best at it. No matter how grimy, you know, an Israelite woman can get, she can never out, out uh, do a so-called white woman when it comes to sexual escapades and that whole sort of thing. They might try, but they can't, they can't compare, man. Um, now I'm jumping over to page 31.
Actually, it's 32. This is what I wanted to read. It says, Jefferson's association with Heming Hemings was not an arbitration of the time. It also was reflected of the insidious entanglement between white men and enslaved women. In the 18th century, Virginia made male slavers, Virgin Virginia's male slavers had full dominion over their enslaved human beings and full sexual dominion over enslaved women and yeah and that was not not just in 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 the 18th century it was in the 16th and 17th century out the gate on the ships they were having sex on the ships with the children and the women and the men all right i said the relationship between were were inherently corrupted by the power of dynamics embedded within them these women were in no position to refuse the advances of their owners or any other white man who wanted them. There was no legal course, and both parties knew this. In fact, the one, uh, one of Jefferson's dear friends, John Hatwell Coke, wrote in his diary that it was not at all uncommon for a bachelor and a, and a, widow's, and a widow's slave owners to have enslaved women serve as substitute for a wife. For Jefferson, after promising Martha that he would not marry again, being involved with an enslaved woman like Sally would have his own unsettling way allowed him to keep his promise. Because he went on to, as I read in, a, in another page, they had a 40-year 40, 40 uh, relationship. So marriage, sex is marriage. As a matter of fact, let's get that. All right. He he made an, uh, this, this, uh, this concubine. This tear, which is really was his own people, he made her a wife. Uh, yeah, this is Genesis twenty, Genesis twenty four sixty seven, and it reads, "And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. And Isaac was conf comforted after his mother's death. So he went on to have several children with this woman. That his family, even though there were evidence." All right, for 200 plus years, tried to deny, and then the DNA evidence proved that these people were exactly who they said they were. All right, so that that's a that's and and so Jefferson is is an obvious evidence of the nature of the so-called white man and what he has done. All right, that's why the law is going to have to separate the wheats from the tares, man. All right, let's go back to a. Uh, uh, Deuteronomy back in the curses. And I'm going to read uh, 31. I'm going to probably shut it down. Um, no, 30. And it says, and this is Deuteronomy 28 and 30, because they talked about how, you know, they will separate marriages and that whole sort of thing. It says, Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her, and thou shalt build a house. And thou shalt not dwell therein, and thou shalt plant a vineyard, and thou shalt not grab, gather the grapes thereof. So in the earlier part of the book, which I'll probably read in the next lesson when I come back to it, it talks about how everything in every city in America has a reflection of slavery on it. Because it all is due to slave labor, one way or another, directly or indirectly. And there's a, a, a horrible payment to be paid for these crimes. That were committed by the so-called white man who was Esau Edom. So this has been another critical race uh, history, historical facts lesson. Call Halal Yahweh by Shinabashai, by Shemba Kakwadash, Wa Ababa Ba, Shalawam Kwam Yasharala.